Hi there folks, this is a little demonstration of how I'm using cheap servo motors to control turnouts. There's lots of ways that you can do that. The way that I'm doing it is with JMRI and MQTT. What's MQTT all about? I'll come to that in a moment. Why servo motors? Because they're cheap. You can get them for around about a dollar, a dollar fifty. Uh, so that's not going to break the bank very much. Okay, now this is my test track. I have a main line across the bottom. If you go from right to left, you have a, a branch into the two sidings and a little run around at the end for the locos. Um, so that's what I'm controlling. Now let's have a look underneath. Here we have the servo motor. It's just a stock standard 9G servo motor. As I said, about a dollar, dollar fifty off eBay or lots of other places. So they're not hard to find. Now um, I've added a little um, mounting bracket there that I've 3D printed. Um, and it has a couple of things in it. It has a full crimp point down the bottom for the throw rod. So it's where it pivots and up the top there is a micro switch to control the frog polarity because I'm using Pico Electro Frogs. Now the brains that's driving all this is looks like this. Here we have what is called a node MCU. It's it's not an Arduino, it's not a clone of an Arduino, but it functions the same way as an Arduino does, and you program it through the Arduino IDE. Uh, if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. And on the right hand side is called a PWM controller board for sending out the PWM signals to up to 16, you can cope with 16 servo motors. Between the two, there's four wires connected. That's known as an I squared C bus, but we're getting technical here. You don't worry about that. Just plug the wires in. Also connected, I've got um, power supply here for the Arduino. That is a five volt power supply. You can power it directly into the micro uh, USB connection. Um, it's just I just found it easier just to plug them into the top there. And there's a 6 volt DC power supply coming into the servo controller board, basically to provide the power for the servo motors themselves. Um, so they're the brains. Now you'll notice there that there is no other connection, so just power in, no other connections going back to JMRI. Um, so how does that all work? That this Node MCU box has uh, Wi-Fi built into it, so it uses a Wi-Fi signal. This is what it looks like on the other side. Um, that squiggly line on the left is the antenna for the Wi-Fi. You can see the micro USB port on the right hand side. And the rest looks like uh, stuff. Oh, that's about all you need to know or care about. Um, yeah, I've got a buck converter because I've actually used using a 12 volts DC bus and I stepped the voltage down using one of these little doodars which again is about a dollar or so, I don't know how much, but not much. Um, so that gives me my 6 volt power supply to the PWM board. Now, MQTT, what's this all about? Um, it's a messaging system. It's just for ways of various devices being able to send a message to one another and it has what is called a broker so that's where the messages are go, go get sent to um, jmri sends a message to the broker that's where the message sits and the arduino or whatever other device you've got it's it's uh, watching the messages that are coming around it sees one that it says oh that's for me i better go and do whatever i'm told to do so that's uh, as often does it it's simple as that um, every time you see examples on the internet for MQTT, they're talking about home automation systems. So in this example that's shown up here, um, it's straight off the MQTT Explorer website, 
MQTT Explorer is just a product available you can download for free um, uh, so that you can have a look at the messages that are going into the message broker. Um, so in this particular case it's talking about the kitchen coffee maker and is sending a message about its temperature, water level, whatever. Yeah. It could be a message that says open the curtains or close the curtains or something like that. Uh, all we're doing is say close turnouts and throw turnouts. Um, um, so that's what messaging, what MQTT is all about. It's simple to set up, so that's what makes it um, attractive. Uh, there are a couple other bonuses I'll come back to in a moment. Okay, now let's have a look under the covers. No, we've done none the covers. Let's have a look at um, JMRI. Here we go. Now in JMRI, um, well, let's let's just start from the right-hand corner here. So this is preferences. So this is you can see at the top here. There's no loco net. There's no NCE. There is no DCC at all. The only connection is MQT, which is the connection to the message broker. So it has where the IP address, where which machine that's on, um, uh, channel. Channel is just the part of the naming convention for the messages. It's not really a channel, but it's a misnomer there. But it, um, uh, it is what it is. Um, so that's that's all the connections. And over to the left-hand side now is the standard turnout table. So I've got my five turnouts defined in there. If I wanted to add another one, I would say add. Let's get rid of that. Let's try that again. Add. And it's popped up over here. Alright, so I'm adding an MQT device. So this is where I would just type in something like um, or yard is what I'm using in this example so if I was an extra one it would be yard and it would be the sixth one um, and then you can give it any username that you want um, just a little word about usernames this is my habit is that I usually have a prefix being the location where these turnouts are and then some sort of meaningful name for them uh, with the colon separated like that it means you can group them together when you have a look at these in Engine Driver, which I'll show you in a moment. Okay, so that's about it on how you set that up. I'm not going to create another one because I don't need it. All right, so there we go. Once you've got turnouts in your turnout table, it's fairly easy to sketch up a layout diagram and then you can use your mouse to click on the turnout to throw it. Or if you've got it on a tablet or something like that or a phone you can just tap it on the screen so now I don't even have to know what the name is um, now as you see I'll throw that one um, it's or close it actually all right so that it comes up here as being closed this one here I'll show you I'll close this one and you'll see that that's changed to closed as well so that's simple now we'll just have a quick look at MQTT um, behind this. Let's see how that comes up. Here we go. Now I'm using MQTT Explorer. Um, I'm having a look at my railway. Um, I'll drill down on this. There's my yard. So there's my five turnouts. And it shows you what the statuses are. Now this is one of the advantages of MQTT is that the broker holds the last status of all the turnouts. So when JMRI starts up, it connects to the broker, it sees, oh, this is what state they're all in, so I'll set them all to that, instead of having them come up as unknown, which is what you often see in JMRI. Um, it knows, it finds out what they are, it gets told. Um, that's very useful. Um, now, this over on the right-hand side here, this is the actual syntax, more like the syntax of the message itself. So it has the various levels that you drill down to. Um, if I have a look at a particular one, let's have a look at number at number one. All right, so that's what that's a message, and it has a value. The value is closed. 
Um, now, if I change that again, let's let's throw this. Uh, you can see that in the Explorer, which is just my view of the messages in the message broker, uh, it's now been changed to be thrown, and uh, it's thrown here, it's thrown here, and you see that message, so they're all tied together. I can even send a message directly to the message broker. Um, so this is the published, I'm going to publish this message and the value that I'm going to give it is, is thrown. So if I just type that in, I say thrown and I say um, one more box I need to tick here is to retain it so that it actually retains that message. That's, that's what JMRI does. And I say publish. All right, so um, thrown. I'd already thrown it, hadn't I? Now let's close that one. Close, and now I'll just send this message again to throw it again. There we go. All right, so so you can see it's not just JMRI. Yeah, I can send a message. JMRI sees that message, and it updates itself and the Arduino sees the message as well, so it will throw the points, close the points, as it's supposed to do. Um, so that's how all that hangs together. Um, that's about it. That's how I'm using all these turnouts. Um, As I said, they're cheap. Uh, what you saw there, those components that I'm using cost about $17 all up. So that works out at about $3.50 per turnout. But how much does it cost per turnout? It depends on how many turnouts you have. Uh, so if I have one, it's going to cost me about $10 for those components. All right, but then it's only going to cost me another $1, $1.50 for each servo mode after that. So if I had 16, it would work out at about $2.25 per turnout. Um, so how much cheaper than that can you get? So that's giving you the motor to drive the turnout, plus all the fancy electronics to control it, um, to control it remotely from your phone. Um, I didn't do the, show you that picture that I meant to show you. So there's engine driver, so here's my list of turnouts with my yard prefix. Um, so I can throw them from from here as well. So there you go. You've got remote control of all your turnouts um, for what three dollars each. So that's about it. That's how I'm doing it. Uh, I must give a big thank you to Speed Miller in Texas. He's given me a lot of guidance and assistance in, along this journey. Um, I'm not the first one to do it. Um, speed is much further down the path than I am. So thank you Speed and thank you all for watching.